Welcome back to the Green Yard. It is a late evening here in Phoenix, Arizona. It is uh, actually almost June. We're right at the end of May, beginning of June. And I have a fun growing update video to share with you today. Um, we're over here in the side yard of the Green Yard. I've mentioned before with some videos that I did over here, like our uh, planting of our fruit punch mango, as well as our planting a sabadilla or a chico sapote, um, that while our other side yard is that beautiful tropical food forest that we just did that video on, we also have another side yard to our house, which is more typical of what you see of a side yard. Uh, it's a little bit less than six feet wide. Um, obviously we need a little walkway to get to this gate behind me. Um, but my experiment was with the side yard when I first started this and I planted that fruit punch mango was to see if I could grow, uh, you know, these tropical trees, kind of this food, mini food orchard on this left side here um, against the wall and still have enough space to walk as well as get that product production and productivity from this part of the green yard. Um, I'm able to plant a lot of these tropical trees uh, because it actually gets afternoon shade after about 2.30 in the afternoon, which if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that that's a little late for our tropical trees. Usually they only like to have sun until about 10 o'clock, maybe push it to 11 o'clock in the morning. And obviously two, three in the afternoon, that's definitely pushing uh, a little bit for their tolerance of our summer sun. But they've actually been doing really well and some of our mango trees have actually thrived uh, and done way better than uh, like our carry mango on the other side. I mentioned that with our tropical food forest. This, actually, I'm sorry, I mentioned that when we planted our Alfonso mango, that um, the structure of that um, tree, the carry mango tree, is nowhere near what the structure of this tree is here, uh, these trees here. This is our Spirit of 76 mango, and they have been doing really, really well this year. They're actually holding on to fruit. Um, it's been, this is two and a half years in the ground, uh, so I'm letting them fruit, well, I let them fruit last year, but they chose not to hang on to the fruit. So this year they are hanging on to the fruit, or so it seems, especially down here, and I'll uh, show that as a close-up too. We got some really good Spirit of 76 mangoes coming on. I think we're going to get one actual mango. Same with our Fruit Punch mango, which is right where the camera is. We'll probably get one mango this year, which is a great start. I'm okay with that. Um, but we're here today for uh, an awesome tree. This is our black sapote tree or chocolate pudding fruit tree. Um, the reason why I wanted to showcase it is because it is blooming. This is actually its third season of blooming. Um, Cause when we, when we moved into the green yard, I planted it actually in the fall of, of that year, the fall of 2020. So I planted it, overwintered it, actually did really well with our winter. Um, and then that spring, it got like one, I think it had one blossom on it, one flower on it. And nothing really happened, nothing came of it. Then the following spring, it had probably about five blossoms on it. And now this year, I've counted probably 20, I, I can see about 20 blossoms on here so far. Um, so it, it's really done really well. Um, I actually pruned it last year. I didn't want to, but I had a branch right in the middle that was kind of falling over and it wasn't what I wanted. And I said, you know what, I'm just gonna risk it. I'm gonna prune it. And so I did actually prune that branch and now we've gotten all this really strong new growth. So let's talk more about growing a black sapote tree here in Phoenix, Arizona. Here we go.
right, so with our black sapote tree, once again, um, another one of those ultra tropical trees. Um, it actually has turned out to have a little bit more cold hardiness than I originally thought it would. So I really protected this the first winter. Uh, same, same with last winter. I kind of protected it, not as, as heavy as I did the winter before, and I actually did really well. So that's how I know it has a little bit more cold hardiness because I didn't protect it like I did some of my other tropical trees and it actually thrived. It grew underneath the frost fabric. And like I mentioned before, we had one of those coldest uh, one of our coldest winters that we've had in quite some time. Um, so our black sapote tree, it does require um, that afternoon shade. So after, uh, what I found is after, you know, two o'clock or so, definitely it needs some shade. I would still recommend doing it uh, after about 11. You can see it does have some sunburn on these older leaves. These are the leaves from over the winter that it put on. Um, so those leaves are definitely more used to uh, the winter sun and they're getting sunburn. The newer leaves that we have on here, there's still a little bit of sunburn, but they're definitely more acclimated to kind of that summer sun because it is still putting on that new growth as we speak. Um, their flowers are really cool and so um, this is something that I'm not well versed in and maybe some of our viewers can shine a light in the comments. Um, I've done my research on our black sapote trees and I've learned that um, there's a lot of variation but the majority of the ones that are sold are self-pollinating, self-fruiting. So they can, uh, you know, their, their flowers have both male and female parts. Now there are some though that are only female and only male. Uh, I do, based on looking at all of the pictures, I do have female flowers on here. And the ones that are kind of that self-containing uh, where they have both types uh, of parts, male and female parts, uh, do look like female flowers. Uh, so their female flowers can produce the fruit. I don't know how, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is, is a variety that, that can, uh, you know, self-contain, it can produce that fruit, it can create its own fruit, or if I need to get, uh, you know, another tree that's a male tree, I, I really don't know. And so maybe that's something that our viewers can, can shed, shed some light on. I've done my research, uh, I'm trying to find some way to hand pollinate these. Um, one of our, I've seen a lot of ants go in and out of the, the flowers, which is great. Actually, one of our main pollinators here in the green yard are ants. All of our mango trees are pollinated by ants. Uh, same with our papayas, what I've seen, they're pollinated by ants, citrus, um, our bananas are all pollinated by ants. So for those of you thinking of getting rid of, of all of your ants, just keep in mind that, you know, they actually are a really great pollinator here in Phoenix. And uh, that is definitely how my mango trees are pollinated because those flowers are covered in ants. So I'm seeing a lot of ants on here. The problem is I'm not seeing any fruit set. Like here's a blossom right here um, that I did hand pollinate as well. Uh, try to stick a Q-tip in there, kind of um, get the little fluffy part at the end of the Q-tip, try to get some of that pollen, spread it to a different flower. It's not working. Um, so I don't know if there's some tips or tricks. Here's another flower that fell off. Um, so I don't know if there's some tips or tricks. Actually, that one might have pollinated. Oh, okay. I don't know if there's some tips or tricks that you guys know that I could uh, utilize when uh, either self-pollinating or helping pollinate our black sapote because I would love to get some fruit off this tree. Uh, even though it is on the smaller side, it's been in the ground for quite some time. It's doing really well. I would be okay with having it fruit. Um, Let's finish up with talking a little bit about our amendments and this really heavy mulch that we have around the tree as well. Here we go. All right, so I'm here with our black sapote tree. Um, you'll notice that um, I have some pretty heavy mulch around. That's actually new mulch. I just put it down. Um, when we have our flood irrigation, it kind of comes in quick through this area and oftentimes it'll take some mulch with it so we actually haven't had very thick mulch around our black sapote for the last about uh eight months to a year and it definitely needed that mulch it looks so much better after i put that mulch in so just remember that mulch um while it may uh you know one of the one of the big um 
topics that people that don't like mulch mention is that it, it takes nutrients away as it starts to break down. I agree that is true. That's why I do the fish emulsion once a month. Try to add back in some of that nitrogen, some of those um, nutrients. But I found that the benefits outweigh the costs when spreading mulch, when doing that heavy mulching. And the biggest benefit is that of water retention. Um, I don't have to water nearly as much. In fact, this part of the green yard, this whole area, these trees only get water once every two weeks. That's it. When we get our flood irrigation, they get water. Uh, I don't supplement water for these guys. I did last year. This year, no supplementing. They've been in the ground for, for three years. Uh, they're doing good. I'm not gonna supplement anything, almost three years. Um, so they're pretty acclimated to their, to their climate. They're pretty good. Now, uh, this heavy mulch is breaking down. It's creating some really nice soil underneath. Uh, these trees are obviously tropical trees. They like to have that organically rich soil. They also like to have that lower pH. So I do add in our sulfur, our agricultural sulfur as well, lower that pH down. Um, so that way the tree can access those nutrients that I'm giving it that once a month fish emulsion that I end up giving the tree. <coughs> like I mentioned before, I did prune it and that prune really set off this explosive explosive growth that we're seeing behind me so all this brand new awesome growth is due to that pruning so i'm really happy that i pruned that branch off i was really hesitant it looked awful it was hitting the wall it was all flopped over i'm so glad i pruned it and now i'm getting this awesome growth and hopefully it continues because it's grown about a foot so far this year and we're just getting into our growing season so i hope it just takes off and ends up being you know a three foot maybe even four foot tall tree by the end of the year that would be really great for it um I'm definitely going to keep uh, you guys updated as to any fruits that I may get. It looks like I actually might have had uh, one of these pollinations take place. This flower right here looks like it actually took, it actually set and there's a fruit inside. So I'm hoping that that is true and that I am getting some of that pollination, uh, that self-pollination or those ants correct because I would really like to not only try the fruit, I've heard it's, it's interesting but it's good. Um, but also to have a fruiting black sapote tree would be really amazing here in the Phoenix desert. So um, I just, I love this tree. I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, I'm definitely going to do some more updates on some of our other tropical trees that I haven't talked about in the next couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. If you like what you see, definitely subscribe, like, uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. And as always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see y'all next time.